All right, welcome back guys to part four. We are here to analyze our results. Um, so it seemed that our, our thing converged here. It took about 464 iterations. How do I know that exact number? Because it says so right here. 464, solution is converged, and here are our values. Lift, very small, drag, moment, heat transfer, all of that. It took about nine minutes for me to run. Oh wait, that's the time left. Uh, okay, well, I'll figure I'll figure out how to analyze that. So, this is our residual plot. Um, that's how the errors went. Here's our coefficient of lift. And you can see it started off very crazy, and then got even more crazy, and then settled out around zero. And that's what we expect, right? Because our this double wedge is a symmetric airfoil, and we were applying it at zero angle of attack. So, drag. We do expect drag. Uh, moment, we expect no moment because no lift. So, uh, total heat transfer rate. I do not know how to get this to work. So, please, if you guys know how to do um, heat transfer stuff in Fluent, please let me know. Um, if not, I'm gonna, I'll definitely be doing research and look into it myself. Um, okay, so what people usually want to see are the pressure or the contours. So let me just pull up this uh, contour plot here. So contour, um, these won't be made automatically. I made these earlier, and this is actually my second attempt at this video. I made the first video without this headset, so the audio was horrible. Um, I'm going to deselect this, save and display, boom. Contour plots, or pressure contours. Ask yourself, does this make sense? Or... Okay, we're not going to look at the pressure contour specifically. I'd much rather look at the velocity contour. I want you guys to know that you cannot see a slip line here. But you should be able to. So velocity, we're going to go with Mach number. Now, I want you guys to remember that um, pressure and velocity are inversely related. So you get highest pressure where velocity is slow and then um, higher yeah, and lower pressure where velocity is the highest. So, yeah, they're just inverses of each other. So that's why I'd rather just look at the this velocity or Mach number plot. So as we could see, so our our free stream velocity it was what it was Mach two, right? And that corresponds to this mustard looking color. As you can see here, as soon as it hits or meets this this double wedge airfoil, you get an oblique shock oblique shock because the pressure increases here and the velocity decreases. See, it went from mustard down to greenish. And then as soon as it turns this corner, we see an expansion fan and then the velocity increases again. And so by the time it's done turning that corner, it goes here and then you're back to your, your free stream um, Mach number-ish. Ish. I say that very lightly because it's not exactly the same color. It's eventually going to settle down to the same color, but obviously not in not in this domain that we that we made. So as you see here in the middle, this is your slip line. This is your line of um, pressure discontinuity. This is where your pressure just jumps from here to here. Also, so remember the whole reason we uh, made our mesh so fine. It's because we wanted to see this boundary layer here. You can see no boundary layer here, but you could start to see it start to form about here-ish. If you see the blue, you could tell because it corresponds to a lower um, velocity, so that's what we expect. And so there's our there's there's our double wedge. Yeah. I wanna. I really want to find a way to be able to just hit calculate and then automatically save all these plots, all this data. Um, if I ever figure that out, I will show you guys how to do that. Um, I did want to show you guys an alternative way to view your results. So you don't have to sit in Fluent all the time. You could also see things in, um, in results here. So what I did was, okay, I'm just going to delete this, show you guys. So delete that, um, where's the results? <laughs> results right here, hover over solution. 
not a standalone. You want results. So double click. We're going to open that up. So also, I don't know how to create the, the animations at this time, but I will in the future. I promise you that. And I keep my promises. So here, I'm just going to double hit uh, symmetry one instead of mode. I'm going to go to variable. So I guess we'll, we'll do pressure for now. We'll apply. As you can see, yeah. <clears throat> so remember, we wanted to create our domain ceiling pretty high so that this shock doesn't bounce off the top and then interrupt the, the flow in the wake. So, or behind the airfoil. So you have a color map here. You could change these to whatever colors you want. Look, they have options for zebra, like what the hell, dude? Zebra, you can change that to logarithmic. Logarithmic. You can go white to blue. There's even fluent rainbow. Oh my god, look at this crazy one. Transparency. Are you kidding me? Bruh. <laughs> um, yeah, I like to use default rainbow. That looks the best to me. That's just my own opinion. Um... I haven't messed with Symmetry 2 as much, but I think you'd get the same thing. Um, yeah, what else is interesting here? Density, right? Ooh, eddy viscosity, dude. I I am not that good yet at this. Inner wall temperature. No, nope. pressure, we just saw that. <laughs> Velocity, that's that. Yeah, you can mess with a whole bunch of different things here. This is called a CFD post. And that's what happens when you do um, this thing. You drag your solution to your results and then you see from there. So I think that's all I have for you guys for now. Um, why? Because that's all I know for now. Um, yeah, like I said, I hope to learn a lot more things in the upcoming future for, for CFD. So like how to do animations, um, I'll be doing more, more shapes. So instead of like double wedge, maybe like, maybe like just a wedge <laughs> and then maybe, um, go into 3d. So like conical flow and stuff like that. So, and then eventually I'll make my way up to doing entire, um, like aircraft and stuff and see what happens from there. So all right, that's all I have for now. I really hope you guys enjoyed the series and learned something. Um, again, I've only been using Fluent for a month, and that was for a, a CFD project for school. Um, yeah, please leave feedback, comment down below uh, what I can improve on or what you would like to see. You know, um, you could say my voice sucks. <laughs> I already know my voice sucks, so um, I hate listening to myself. You know, I have to watch these YouTube videos later and be like, Ugh, dude, that's how I talk. Anyways, um, yeah, that's it for now. Um, yeah, please like, comment, even subscribe if you like the stuff. But please, feedback, that is number, number one to me. So please let me know. Um, thank you guys again, and I'll see you guys in the next series. Peace.